If you think about Orlando, I'm sure almost everyone instantly thinks of this place first. This is where it all started with here in the theme park capital of the world. Welcome to the Magic Kingdom at Disney World. In 2017, I visited Orlando for the last time and since then a lot has changed. Every park in this theme park capital has invested in new rides and experiences and after six and a half years, I'm back to explore them all. Today we're visiting the park that started it all here in Orlando. Disney's one and only Magic Kingdom. It's been six and a half years ago, but here I am again uh, in the oldest theme park of Walt Disney World and also the oldest one in Orlando. In fact, this park is even the most visited park in the entire world, actually. It's my third visit here now. And although I love coming here, it's also one of the most stressful parks in Orlando, in my opinion, just because it's so popular and crowded every time I visit it so far. But it's low season now, so fingers crossed today will be different. Now the Magic Kingdom, uh, yeah, it has a parking lot, not, uh, but it's not located next to the park. No, to get to the park, uh, you will need to take the monorail or a boat crossing the Seven Seas Lagoon. But once you're here at uh, the front gate of the park, it's just very straightforward, of course, and you just enter here via Main Street here, which is the entrance area of the Magic Kingdom, where we are right now. And uh, yeah, there's no real rides in this area, but it serves as a street bringing you to the central hub from where you can enter all the areas here. The themed areas here are Adventureland, Liberty Square, Frontierland, Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. So compared to the European park, it's already quite different. But without further ado, let's dive into the first area of the day. First area of the day, that will be Adventureland. Here in Orlando, Adventureland is home to the magic carpets of Aladdin. Uh, Aladdin, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, a ride which can be found in Paris at the Studios Park, but honestly, here it fits a lot better uh, in the environment. Not sure who uh, of the Imagineers had the awful idea to put that uh, ride in uh, the studios in Paris because it would fit a lot better in uh, Adventureland. But anyway, uh, second ride here in Adventureland is uh, Jungle Cruise. That's a ride we don't have in Paris. It's a fun outdoor boat ride where we go through the jungle and such and see all kinds of animals, etc. Uh, not real animals though, but it's still a very fun ride from what I can remember. So let's find the entrance of a uh, jungle cruise and try it out. That was Jungle Cruise. It's a very fun uh, boat ride. It's nothing too spectacular. It's just uh, nice to see some uh, animatronics there. The funny jokes uh, along the way are also, uh, yeah, it's just part of Jungle Cruise, of course. It's, 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 it's a fun, it's a fun ride. It, it's, it's not worth uh, an hour wait, uh, in my opinion. But if you're here with kids, it's an enjoyable uh, boat tour through the jungle here. So. It's something uh, we don't have in Paris, and maybe I, I'm not sure if, if I if I would like to see it in Paris, but it's it's nice to do it here. Now I'm from the first ride of the day onto the next highlight here in this park. 
which is another boat ride in classic Disney but this time an indoor ride uh, it's the one and only Pirates of the Caribbean now this ride here opened up here in Magic Kingdom in 1973 but has been modified a little in both 2006 and 2011 to accommodate uh, for example animatronics of the movie characters from the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise which was based on these Disney rides in Disney World and Disney Land in Anaheim. Feels a bit like Inception, I know. But anyway, this amazingly well-themed uh, nine-minute boat ride here is a dark ride you cannot skip. So uh, let's check it out. All right, so that was Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, I think I can safely say that we as Europeans can be very lucky because our version in Paris is so much better than this version. This one is, is way shorter. There's uh, not as many scenes. There's not as many drops and that kind of stuff. It's just a way better version in Paris than this one. But maybe it's just because this is an older one. The one in Paris is an improved version. I don't know, but uh, yeah. I'm much more a fan of the one in Paris. And from that Disney classic on to the next one, friendly re reminder here, I'm going to probably repeat myself a lot today as the Magic Kingdom here. It's one of the older Disney parks and the most visited theme park in the world. So a lot of rides today are real Disney classics for sure. But anyway, for the next one, we have to go here in Frontierland where we're about to do this coaster right in front of us. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad uh, is a roller coaster from Aerodynamics, opened up in 1980 and has been a fan favorite since then.
right, Big Thunder Mountain here behind me. It's a fun coaster uh, that I already knew because I already did this one. It's a really nice uh, aerodynamics ride. Um, now, I don't really think this is a better one than the one in Paris. This, the one in Paris still uh, is, is so much better in my opinion. The, the, the beginning and the ending of that ride is just phenomenal uh, compared to this one. This one is, is still quite out of control, the, the, the feeling on this ride, but yeah, anyway, I'm a much bigger fan of the one in Paris, actually. But next to this roller coaster, we also have another dark ride, which does have a European counterpart too. Now in Paris, these two rides are both situated in the Frontierland area, but in Orlando, Big Thunder Mountain uh, can be found in Frontierland, while the next one can be found at the neighboring Liberty Square area. Uh, so you already noticed the ride we're going to next uh, might seem familiar, but it has a distinct uniqueness because we are going to do the Haunted Mansion. It's somewhere behind these buildings. Let me see where it is. Okay, I don't see the Haunted Mansion. I'll get back to you in a minute. Okay, there it is right in front of us, the Haunted Mansion, the American version of Phantom Manor. Now where Phantom Manor uh, in Paris is a much darker version uh, with a great story. This right here is much more kids friendly and uh, yeah, about a bunch of happy ghosts. Uh, and the outside here is also clearly different, as you can see. I'm trying to get a little bit uh, closer. It's very busy here, sorry. Ooh, that's a lot. But as you can see, uh, the ride here has a very uh, different, uh, different outside uh, of the building. It's very different than the European version as it needs to better fit uh, Liberty Square here behind us but as you can see it's very busy so uh, we're going to try to get in line or do it later we'll see Okay, the Haunted Mansion is an enjoyable ride. Now the outside of the ride is very different than what we have in Paris, but from the moment you enter, it's very yeah, similar. Practically the same pre-show, although some uh, yeah, other dialogue. The ride itself has a lot of similar scenes also, just here and there, some minor differences. It's a bit less scary maybe, the, the, the animatronics and such. Uh, but the biggest difference is the scene at the end, actually, as in Paris, you're going through a Western village uh, with all kind of uh, yeah, zombie-like creatures and stuff. Uh, but that is not the case in this version. And to be honest, I prefer Phantom Manor maybe because that one is just a tiny little bit more beautiful in my opinion. And uh, for example, the exterior is more beautiful. And the boarding station is also a lot more interesting in uh, Paris uh, because it's a lot bigger there and more uh, heavily themed. Uh, so overall, Haunted Mansion, great uh, dark ride, but uh, I think in Europe we have a better version.
Okay, and with that, let's leave a Liberty Square already and get ourselves to the world of fantasy here. As we're exploring Fantasyland right now, it's home to a whole bunch of other classic Disney rides. And this area is like a classic dark ride paradise. First dark ride we're off to here in Fantasyland is It's a Small World, the super popular uh, boat ride which can be found at almost any Disneyland style park around the world. Now this one here has been here since opening day and I'm pretty sure nowadays everybody knows the song and many of you watching already know what kind of ride this is. Now it's been many many years ago since I did the American version but a few months ago I did the version in Paris again. So with that quite fresh in my memory let's check if this version is very comparable or not. So it's a small world that's just very similar to the one in Paris. Although the scenes in Paris are more up to date, maybe more recent with the addition of uh, Disney characters. So this one here is a bit more uh, true to the original. But what I don't like here is the building outside. It's, it's a lot more beautiful in, in the original version and the one in Paris. Uh, but if you solely look at the ride itself, it's very, very similar. So not really anything bad to say there. And from this earworm ride, let's get to another Disney classic dark ride, which is Peter Pan's Flight. Another opening day dark ride. Now in Paris, this ride is by far one of the most popular ones when you look at the waiting times each day there. And here it doesn't seem to be any different, actually. It's a waiting time of 55 minutes now. But let's conquer the line and check out if this version is really superior or not. Alright, so Peter Pan's flight is an enjoyable dark ride. Uh, the ride itself is very yeah, similar to the one in Paris. Although the queue here is a lot more beautiful. In Paris you're yeah, you're basically walking outside in a very, very boring queue actually, while here you're yeah, actually walking through the, the, the house of, of uh, yeah, Wendy and such in, in London. So that yeah that's a bit more beautiful here. There's also like some like uh, interactive uh, moments in the queue which is also fun. So overall, uh, this ride is nicely done, but the ride is very similar to the one in Paris. And from all these dark rides, I'm in the mood for something else now. So up next is Mickey's Feel Our Magic. Now, what is this? Well, it's it's nothing too spectacular, but it's one of, yeah, it's, it's for sure one of my more beloved 4D cinemas. The movie itself, the movie itself is nicely done. Uh, and yeah, just how they, they built the whole theater around this movie is, is really cool. But I cannot spoil too much, so I'll let you know more about it afterwards. All right, so Mickey's Filler Magic, I'm still in love with this uh, 4D movie. It doesn't have a lot of effects, there's not like a moving seat and that kind of stuff. The, the effects are kind of minimal, but just the movie is very nice and the, the fact the, the, the screen widens uh, during the movie and such. Um, there is like a, a version of Filler Magic in Paris, it's like the cheap version of this ride because there's, yeah, there, there's just no theater just like this one here. So it's definitely not the same as this one, but I really, really like this one, especially the, the, the songs. 
the fun uh, story and such. It's just a very fun one. Hi there. <laughs> And from that fun 4D cinema, let's get back to yet another dark ride here at Fantasyland. Yes, there is really like an overkill of dark rides at this part of the park, maybe. But for those who are fans of dark rides, this is paradise, of course. Next up is the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Now, this dark ride is fairly new and was the first Winnie the Pooh dark ride in a Disney theme park when it opened up in 1999. And since then, more versions were built actually in other parks around the world. Now, uh, I remember this one being a fun ride, so let's have a look if my memory is right. Okay, so Winnie the Pooh is the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh Dark right here. It's a very fun one. Uh, the ride system is really nicely done and with the bouncing and such and the, and the scenes are just really nice. Uh, it looks, yeah, it doesn't look very, very heavily themed, but it's just nice for kids. But yeah, overall, just the ride system is very, very, very fun in my opinion. Okay, there is one more dark ride here we have to explore at uh, Fantasyland. We're going to do uh, something entirely different first. And probably also the, the ride here in this area with the longest line. It's 105 minutes at this moment. It's Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, a roller coaster constructed by Vekoma, themed all around uh, the Disney's first feature film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs from 1937. Now the ride itself here opened in 2014 was added here when they completely rebuilt this area of Fantasyland, adding a few new rides here. Uh, there used to be a Snow White dark ride here in Fantasyland, but that one was removed, so uh, this ride is kind of a, a rebirth of, uh, that, of that one actually, but in a completely new way and with a completely different storyline. Now the ride system itself is pretty nice with a uh, trains shaped as mine carts, but not just cars, no, the, 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 the carts actually are able to swing in the, the bank turns, which is nicely done. Now I remember doing the ride a few times already and not really feeling a lot of that effect. So to me it always felt kind of gimmicky, but anyway it's a fun ride for kids. Now the dark ride section inside of the ride is rather small and the ride itself is not really long or thrilling, uh, but still this ride manages, manages to have always huge lines as you can see because of this uh, because this is more of a yeah kids friendly roller coaster in the park of course but anyway let's do it
Okay, so Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Uh, it's a fun kiddie coaster. It's nothing too special, actually. Uh, I mean, the, the, the swinging of the, of the, the, the trains is not really that uh, spectacular. It's very, very gentle. It's really gimmicky, in my opinion. Uh, the, the ride itself is also uh, not really forceful. There is not much to it. It's, it's clearly a kiddie coaster. Uh, we had to wait uh, two hours for this ride, but that was a bit, a bit of a bummer. But anyway, uh, we rode it. Good to try it out once here, but I'm not going to wait in line again for this one. And like I said earlier, there is still one more dark right here at Fantasyland, which we have to explore. And that is this beauty here. Uh, probably one of my favorite uh, dark rides here in Fantasyland. It's Under the Sea, a dark ride from 2012, based on the Little Mermaid, the animated version, of course, not the new live action one. It uses a similar Omnimover style dark ride, ride system, just as, for example, uh, the Haunted Mansion but it's obviously not as spooky as that one. Though I remember this ride is really nicely done with all the modern effects and some cool animatronics, so I cannot wait to ride it. Okay, so Under the Sea is still a really nice dark ride, actually. It's one of those dark rides I hope one day will come to Paris. But the story of the ride is nice. It's uh, very much based on the movie, so the scenes are well done with some modern animatronics. Some fun songs, nice integration uh, of screens, uh, which is luckily not an overkill in this ride. The only downside is the, the wrap-up of the story at the end, actually. It feels like uh, the budget was suddenly all spent and they still had to create an ending. So they wrapped up the whole story in just one small, cheaper looking scene, but anyway, overall it's a really, really nice dark ride. Now I'm from the last dark ride here at Fantasyland, let's get to the last roller coaster at Fantasyland, which is the Barnstormer here. Uh, now I have to admit I always skip this one on my previous visits, as it's just a small kiddie coaster, uh, similar to, for example, Flight of the Hippogriff at Island of Adventure. Uh, but this one is even shorter than that one and it's more of a custom layout. It's based on a standard junior coaster layout from Vekoma, but uh, mirrored and uh, with a transfer track to accommodate two trains. But enough information, let's try it out for the first time. Okay, Barnstorm here behind me. 
It's a very short uh, Vekoma coaster. It's a very, uh, yeah, not really a spectacular one. There's not much I can say about it. It's just fun for kids. But uh, I'm glad I only had to wait like a, a small 20 minutes because otherwise it would have been uh, not worth the wait. And with that, we're leaving Fantasyland behind and we're off to explore the last area of the day and by far the most anticipated area here today. Welcome to Tomorrowland. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of the theme we have in Disneyland Paris, uh, where we have Discoveryland instead of a Tomorrowland based on the stories of Jules Verne and such. And I can appreciate this version a lot, uh, of course, too. Now, uh, we're off to the newest ride in the park here now, as we have an appointment for the virtual queue which we entered this morning. And that is this amazing looking new motorbike coaster from Vekoma Tron Light Cycle Run. It's an exact copy of the ride at, this, at uh, Shanghai Disneyland, but with an English voiceover during the ride, obviously, instead of a Chinese one. Now, before we get on the ride, let me tell you more about the queue system, actually because Disney World has uh, two roller coasters which are fairly new. Uh, the one we're doing right now, Tron Light, Tron Light Cycle Run and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Now you can do both coasters once uh, a day, only if you're able to secure a virtual queue slot in the Disney World app actually. And you're only able to book a slot at 7 a.m. in the morning or at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, but that last time is only if you're in the park itself. So if you're not able to book a slot at one of those two moments, you are not able to ride these coasters. As there is no regular stand standby line. Which to me feels ridiculous actually. Because on calm days, you're practically able to ride it once while the queue might be empty. Yeah, just why, why not give people the opportunity to just wait in line just like any other theme park.
Okay, we just went on Tron light cycle run. It's really a fun uh, motorbike coaster, although it's a little bit short in my opinion, but uh, nevertheless, it's a very fun one. It's better than, for example, booster bike for sure. Uh, the indoor section is also really cool. The, the lights, I expected it to be more uh, brighter, the lights. They were kind of dim. Uh, in my opinion, but anyway, the, the the lighting inside is just really cool with all the all the uh, Tron uh, style uh, light effects and such. But I also uh, not really liked was the the sound. It was very hard uh, the sound effects uh, inside. They were very loud actually, but nevertheless, it's it's still a very very enjoyable, very cool uh, motorbike coaster. Really enjoyed it actually. Now I'm from this great roller coaster onto another roller coaster. This is not a new one. Space Mountain here in front of us is another Disney classic ride which opened up in 1975 and was constructed by Arrow. Unlike the version in Paris, this one here is a kids friendly uh, family ride. Very reminiscent to like a wild mouse style ride, but not really a wild mouse. It's just a fun indoor coaster in the dark. And actually there's two roller coasters inside here as there's a left side track and a right side track but without further ado we're going to look for the entrance and ride this beauty Right, Space Mountain, it's still a fun uh, aero uh, coaster. You, you can feel it's an old one, but it's still pretty smooth in my opinion. It's just a really fun one with uh, the tight turns and the drops and the sudden drops. And the, the, it's just a really, really fun family coaster. It's very, very different than the one in Paris, where, uh, of course. Um, do I like the one in Paris more? Maybe a little bit. But it's just, yeah, you cannot compare those two, of course. It's, but this one is just, it's a fun one. And now the last ride of today, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. This is uh, the same ride as we have in Paris, where it's called the Buzz Lightyear's Laser Blast. So nothing new here and certainly nothing spectacular as the ride in Paris looks just like a cheap cardboard ride. Now for the ones that don't know this ride, this is an interactive shooting dark ride based on Buzz Lightyear, the Space Ranger character from the Toy Story movies. So let's try to score some points again.
right, so that was Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin. It's such a cheap uh, dark ride, actually. It's the same as in uh, in Paris, but this one, I, I really ha hate this ride. It, it doesn't fit Disneyland at all. It doesn't fit this place at all. It just looks so cheap with all the cardboard uh, sets and such. Uh, also, the shooting it was very difficult to see where to shoot. The only nice thing here on this version is the, the tunnel you have with the video screen. That's something you don't have in Paris. But uh, for the rest, it's just the same shitty ride, actually. And with that, we wrap up our day here at Magic Kingdom. It's by far the most visited park in the world. And it's the very clear day. It predicted a calm day today on all crowd calendars but the lines were still really long compared to other parks we did so far. And the main reason of this is of course the awful money-grabbing cash cow Genie Plus service, ruining the experience for literally everyone in this park. It's, it's a stressful experience if you want to do all rides here on a relaxing pace, and it's painful to see how they try to shake every penny out of your pockets with all their services. I mean, Walt Disney was a businessman maybe, but I'm not even sure if he would have approved this. He created Disneyland as a place for everyone to experience happiness and such. And yeah, this day today was more stressful than happiness because of how long the lines uh, were. Uh, some lines grow really excruciatingly long because of that genie bullshit. And also the, the virtual queue uh, for, for Tron, for example, is such a stupid thing. I mean, just let people decide what they want to wait for. I'm, I'm sorry, Disney. I just didn't feel the Disney magic today and it's... Yeah, if this is a trend for how things are improving for the future for all guests, this is really, really bad actually. But anyway, there are some fun rides here, some, uh, yeah, mostly uh, some nice dark rides like Under the Sea, on that Mansion and such. And there's also some fun coasters like uh, Seven Dwarfs, uh, Tron, Space Mountain. But when looking at the rides, I'm just much more a fan of Universal uh, because yeah, those uh, rides are more, more my kind of stuff and such and the lines were not as atrociously long. Now, teaming wise, the park itself looks nice, but Disneyland in Paris is just so much more beautiful actually. So I'm proud to be like a European, even uh, while the Magic Kingdom is much more visited. And luckily, as I rather spend less long in lines in Paris than waiting for uh, uh, things here in the Magic Kingdom, but anyway, that was our day here. Tomorrow we're off to Hollywood Studios, but that is for another video. See ya!